a floating on the ocean boat, not a floating in the mud boat. Yeah, look, I'll be the first to admit that, um, that not all my plans go to plan. And uh, this particularly was probably one of the worst um, situations that we've ended up in in the boat. Well, maybe not one of the worst, certainly not the most painful, but um, just very quick, very dramatic. We basically were anchored up Camp Creek and uh, I think I'd grown a little bit complacent with how reliable and consistent the weather had been. So while I had my big anchor and chain out, I didn't have enough out, which I think possibly may not have been as much of an issue, except that we had a hole directly behind us. So we're all anchored up really tight, and there's a big hole that we ended up dragging into. So this big tropical gust came straight through, and uh, it's about 40, 45 knots straight down the down the river. Anywhere else, we were super protected, and it just um, within seconds we started dragging straight into our friend's boat, Blue Yonder. So as I was trying to get the motor started so that we could at least gain some control over where we were heading, um, I pushed the ignition of the I pushed the ignition of the motor straight through to the other side. As I looked behind me, I could see Blue Yonder just getting closer and closer, and I had to completely shut off everything I was thinking about, reach through, push the ignition back out so that I could get the motor on. And luckily, the anchor grabbed a little bit, motor, we got the motor going and, uh, you know. And then we had the rocks to contend to, but by the time I had to till it down, the motor running, we, we had enough control. And a big thank you to Steve on Banyan. He was in his dinghy within moments, and before I knew it, he was throwing his lines up the side of the boat, jumped on board, pulled the, pulled the anchor up for me because I, I didn't have a winch at this point. So he pulled that up by hand and then we started <laughs> motoring out into 40 knots. Just um, somehow we managed to move, you know, one or two knots at a time. It's pretty shallow at the entrance. We got over that and and it was, it was so wild for such a short period of time. It was just go, go, go. Um, very high stakes and, and uh, we ended up just anchoring out in the front, you know, in a better spot. More chain and very soon it just went straight back to a glass off. It was just this huge front that just came in and annihilated us and was gone within 15 minutes, which was kind of hard to wrap my head around. You know, it was a real, it's very strange to be in such high stakes and then moments later, nothing. It takes a lot to be okay with that kind of thing. But needless to say, some of the some of the best lessons I've ever learned have been the hardest ones. You know, and you learn fast. Hey girls! Nice batching jackets. We are anchored up further out. The storm passed straight over us, didn't even drop any rain. We just got hit with I don't know how many knots. And like from any other direction it would have been absolutely fine but we got smashed straight up straight up camp creek like straight up the middle of the creek i just can't believe that that is by far the closest i've come to causing some real major damage to my boat and someone else's i don't know why i keep repeating that i feel like i should uh say more to try and illustrate just how hectic that was so i guess i'll make dinner and like watch a movie get ready to head to king's cascade tomorrow so we'll give that a go after the horrendous gust yesterday that nearly dragged us into another boat and into the rocks completely unrelated but both of my fridges have died so the first one died a little while ago um the compressor stopped working and it's not the first time i've had that issue with that brand but i had a backup um, I had a backup Dometic that was Old Faithful and that is not getting below 10 degrees now. Uh, I'll check the power, it seems like the compressor's shutting off as well and I think they just can't really handle the heat so I'm going to get some Bushman frigids when I get back but that's not going to help me now so I don't know, I'm going to check the wiring again and see if I can't run it through the inverter and maybe that, maybe that works. Anyway, the guys are leaving so we're going to head down to King's Cascade which is further down the Prince region and uh, find ourselves a little spot to park up.
but I need a coffee. I'm going to run outside and pull that anchor up. So it looks like the best course of action is to be going right in between those two islands, right down this narrow little channel. That's going to be deeper than going around by the looks of it. Look at that. Four and a half. Yup, yup, there. How you going, darling? Good. You enjoying the Kimberley? Yeah. Yeah? I got the water for you. Thank you, darling. I appreciate that. From the top. I know. You did a good job climbing up there, that's for sure. Yeah. With my monkey power. Yeah. It's just a lot of really, really tight navigation through the Kimberley, but one of the benefits of some of these channels, or a lot of these channels, is where there's a lot of water moving through and it's really narrow, it carves out really deep gullies, you know, through those channels. So you've got quite a bit of depth, or at least more. You know, like, I mean, right now there's five metres under our boat, but as it narrows, it's getting deeper and deeper, just because it's got to push all that water through, which burrows the bottom of the, uh, of the channel out. So great to use to your advantage. Just something to keep in mind if there's nothing on the charts, because a lot of this is uncharted, I'll just use the sonar maps. And if there's nothing there, then you start thinking, you know, how would the water behave? And a lot of the time, if there's big tides pushing through a narrow space, you're gonna have a deeper channel. All right, we just heard there's a big croc on the bank, so we're gonna go check him out and see if we can get some good footage of it. Look at that, just hidden in the mud. Don't you dare get out, chicken. He's just buried in the mud. He's buried himself. Maybe he just sunk. He might have sunk, huh? It's probably heavy enough. Oh, come on. First one smacked him. He didn't. Oh, he didn't. Let's go get some more. At this point we hadn't quite built up the confidence we were going to need to actually go into King's Cascade and dry out our mono hole in a mud pit. We were anchored out the front and as the tides increased it became quite clear we couldn't stay there. But before any of that the girls and I headed in via dinghy. We climbed up the side of King's Cascade up to an, an incredible water hole up the top. It was a hell of a climb to get in there. Yeah. Pretty bloody gross Hallie. God damn it. Pretty high already. Hallie, come on. It is looking a bit dry. Nearly there though. We're gonna start heading over this way. You're yeah, alright. It's actually a really worn track through the spin effects in the rocks. So I guess they bring so many people up here, but it's pretty clear there's been some lightning strikes. What's that, chicken? I can hear it. I can hear the Oh, wow. This is it. This, Hallie, come check this waterfall out. Up here, up here. Oh my. Is that the one? How is it, girls? Good. Oh, it is stinking hot. I didn't bring the waterproof cover for the GoPro, and the screen's cracked, so I can't take it in the water. But. I'm going to go for a jump in. Hollywood, so good. I think I'm going to sit here all afternoon. Yeah. Oh! Feel good? That's so good. What's that? 
cool. It, oh, sorry. Oh. Yeah. Nah, they're coming back for it. That is, that is the most amazing water. Bah, that's really good. Right. What's that? You're gonna climb on it? You might fall in the water, chicken. I reckon just have a swim down there. Ow! Nice fight. Alright, go, 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 go. We're all clipped in, ready to go. We're going to bust it down this mountain. Because all of King's Cascade completely dries out. It's only a small little inlet. We had to get back down before the entrance closed off, and especially with that crop lurking around, look, you know, we really needed to get down there. That's the entrance. That's the entrance right there that we've got to get down to and get out before it closes over. Otherwise, I'm probably going to end up dragging my tinny through the mud. And I just... I don't want to do it if I can avoid it. Trying to get these kids to hurry up is like trying to squeeze blood out of a stone. So it looks like we're getting stuck here because no one wants to hurry up. <clears throat> oh shit, that's careful on this edge, darling. Back off, back away. That's a sheer drop. All right, come on, Hallie, come on. So it turns out we actually went the extra long hard way on the way in. Which is usually the way we like to do things, the hardest way possible, but there's a much easier route that's quite well dug in. God. Oh, perfect, look at that. She'll slide straight in. Oh, fuck. Um, all right, we'll get you kids in first. That's what the extent that we're in. All right. Come on, Ola, in you go. All right, Hallie, look at me, look at me. I'm up in my knees, chicken, it's all good. Yeah, I've said it before and I'll say it again, Steve's a man's man and he, here he is again saving us, dragging our dinghy back off the mud into the water so we can actually get out. All right. Found it. Am I gonna go up to the top and jump off it? Yeah. Holy man. So you think no you'd way. have a pretty rough landing, eh? No way. Girls, you see the waterfall? No waterfall there. Yep. Oh look at that. Couple of rocks right in front of you.
<laughs> going through sideways. Hard right. There's a snake skin on the rock. Yes, please, yeah. Yeah, snake skin. Hey, just careful, it's really slippery here. I'm gonna get on, I totally forgot about it, hang on. On that rock over there, Hallie, see? Nah. That's so good. Yeah, see girls, look. I found it when I came up. Snake skin. What? That's a snake, they shed their skin, chicken. I thought that was red too. Nah, snake skin. Whoa, all oh, the snake skin. Remember that movie I was watching with that snake in it? Yeah. It um it had its snake skin come off. Yeah. Yeah. Get in the water, girls. That's a croc right there. Yeah, I can't wait till you slip in. Yeah. Whoa. Pretty much. Like oh, you snack. You know, oh, fresh meat is my favourite place to really snack with people. Yeah. Is that the croc there? Let's see if I can get closer to him. He's definitely in there, he's just over here. Well that's it. Apparently I didn't record much else after that. We still spent a heap more time in the uh, in the Prince Regent River that we've got to cover, and we should be able to get the videos out with a bit more frequency. We, the girls and I sailed 1,100 nautical miles in in seven weeks, so now we're a bit more settled. Uh, we can get back to work. If you get to go on the website, we've got Patreon, we're selling coffee from Salty Jogs Coffee Co. We can ship anywhere throughout Australia. And we're also signed up for the, uh, the Young Cruisers Award. So have a look at that, jump on board, and, um, and I'll be back to cover the rest of the, uh, the Kimberley trip with the girls shortly, very soon.